might be pretty hot there. Well, good morning. Oh, if you guys don't know, my name is Alex, and I'm so excited to do this today. I don't ever get to do this part. I'm always playing the keys, and, and God bless Myra this morning. You played for a long, long time, huh? Yeah, wherever you went, I don't see her. There she is back there. I see her. And real fast, because I have the microphone and I can, right? Um, as that, that's my dad, by the way. When I say dad, that's Pastor Monty. Um, as he just said, I'm the worship pastor here at Jubilee. And I want to just, uh, I want to honor my team this morning real fast. So if you're on the worship team with me, if you help me serve up here on stage with music, that includes you guys at the sound booth. I've got several. Um, if you guys want to just stand, if you're on the worship team, if you help in the sound booth, the media, the, all that stuff, yeah, give them a round of applause. Because absolutely, 100%, I could never do this without them. Um, and it just completely blessed me this morning to be able to sit down there and to watch a team that has sat under me be able to lead this thing without me. It's the coolest thing as a leader to see them be able to do it without you, you know? And so this morning, um, it's only appropriate that the worship pastor would teach you something about worship, right? And I want to read something to you real fast um, that the Lord gave me. And it, just so you know, it's a good thing we don't have a ton of time left because I'm pretty sure he gave half my message while he was up here anyway. So uh, I could just rip off half of my notes and we would be golden. But uh, Psalms 100, and I didn't give you guys this at the sound booth because I didn't have it yet. But it says, shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Amen. And it's so great. I, I can get emotional really fast, so just bear with me on some of this stuff. But I'm worshiping here this morning, and, and as everybody's coming down front, this little boy comes down and stands by me, and he lifts his hands, and he's worshiping the Lord. He's going to continue through every generation, okay? He's faithful. It doesn't matter. Even if we are not faithful, he is faithful. Amen? Oh, man, I'm just so excited. I kept writing and writing notes and notes and more notes, and I was like, I've got to stop. I'm not going to have enough time for this. But there's just so much goodness in him, you know? And once you start diving into that, it just never ends, okay? So this morning, I wanna talk about worship. And the first thing I had wrote down, which is so funny because we saw all of it happen this morning. When you think the word worship, typically people think music. They think the lights go down and ah, you see it all the time. The lights go down, they're playing my favorite song. And you're like, yes, this was for me this morning. And you start getting those Holy Spirit goosebumps. And you're like, woohoo, the Holy Spirit's moving. Woohoo. And then you're singing and all of it's good. And you're resting on Sunday morning. Yes, the Lord is good. And at 12 o'clock, you're like, Pastor's still preaching, man. He still goes. I'm going to be late for lunch, you know. And, and it's like, what did we gain in that moment of time, you know? What, what, are we, what are we here for? What are we gaining out of this worship experience? What is worship, right? What are we doing? And so uh, just, I, I did some definitions and things like just really easy, funny story, just sidebar. Uh, Brian, he runs a lot of the media stuff, him and Kara, and we were talking about it. And he said, your dad, sometimes he was like, if you could send me like some notes and stuff, because he runs all the live streaming and he puts up the, the YouTube video at the end. Um, but he said, your dad uses some weird words and big words, Hebrew and Greek and this stuff. And I said, don't worry, Brian, my words are real simple this morning. Because, you know, how many know it's good to just get back to the basics, amen? So of this definition, the things that I found, I've, I kind of paraphrased and made my own little definition. Um, what is worship? It's the feeling or expression of deep respect for someone or something, and deep love and respect for a god or goddess, right? So that means we can worship someone, we can worship something, or we can worship a little g god, or we can worship the big g god, right? And so all of these things are possible within worship. Worship is not just confined to Jesus, okay? Worship is, worship is an action that we partake in and, and we get to decide who sits on that throne that we worship, amen? And so how do we know 
that we are worshiping him. Okay, so I have a verse for you, Matthew 16, and they'll have it on the screen. I want to read it to you in the, the New Live transa- Translation. That's my Bible. I love this version. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, oh, pardon me, let's back up a little bit. So uh, Jesus had just told his disciples about his death. Uh, he had just told them what was going to happen, that he was going to have to die, that he was going to be resurrected, all these things. And Peter says, no, you're not, because Peter's that guy, you know. And so Peter said, no way. And that's when the famous line, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, right? And then it says, he goes to talk to his disciples. He says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Nothing, right? That's what we're here for. That's, that's it's people, man. That just There's so many things not worth the time that we give them. You know what I mean? There's so many things... And, and I have it in my notes. I, did you find that in the message, Kara? Perfect. Let's see. I, want, I love the version that it came up in the message. It says, then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to finding yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? And that's the question this morning. What could you ever trade your soul for? And we would sit here on a Sunday morning in a church pew and we would say, nothing, nothing. But then we go every week, all week long, and we trade our souls for, you know, school, for work, for our kids, for our spouse. And none of these things are necessarily bad. But, but when we lose sight, and, and the picture that I've had all week was this giant throne, and you can picture it however you want. I, I've seen... Uh, this is a funny, anybody ever watched The Emperor's New Groove? You guys might be a little old for that, sorry, but Cusco's sitting up on his throne up there, right? And it's like, for, you can't even see him sitting up there. It's so big, this massive throne, and I just, and cartoons are fun, but I just see this big throne, and, and, and it's Jesus' throne. It's Jesus' throne. And yet, so many times we go, we say, Jesus, come here. Hey, it's not Sunday anymore. It's it's work's turn to sit up there. Okay. Hey, it's 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 time for it's time for sports to sit up there. Hey, it's Super Bowl Sunday, Jesus. Sorry, we don't need you today. The Chiefs were here. And, and and it sounds crazy, right? But we do it so often and so naturally that it's become just second nature. And then we come here on a church service on a Sunday morning and we think, All hail King Jesus. And it was beautiful. And I'm sitting down there thinking, like, this is it, you know? If you read the Gospels and you read Jesus going and speaking to his, his disciples, he spoke to his disciples differently than he spoke to the people out in the field. Amen? And, and he was able to cut through the disciples and say, no. This is, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> he didn't say that to anybody else out in the field. Even the demon-possessed man, he cast the demon out, and he loved him. He did it differently, right? And so this morning, I feel like we can do things a little bit differently, amen? You're, you're big enough for it. You're, you're golden, okay? And here's the thing. Jesus doesn't ever condemn you, or he doesn't, he, he doesn't ever correct you without giving you an answer, without giving you a way to, to change, okay? And so... Um, where did I go? I've lost. This is so scattered, my notes. I'm telling you, I went crazy with this thing. <clears throat> so deny yourself was the first thing. He said, that, that's, this is the way to worship him. If you want to be my followers, if you want to worship me, this is how you do it. You got to deny yourself first thing, okay? You have to give up your own way. Let me lead. That's what the message says. Let me lead. How does that look like? What, is the, what does that entail? And um, there was a time... It's been, oh goodness, several years ago. I started, we can back up a little bit further. When I was 18 years old, I had my first chance to be on stage at a church on a worship team as part of a, a worship team, if you will. Um, and I had no idea. Green, completely. I love music. I like to sing. And, and I just did, it was a whole new experience. And it was an experience now that looking back, 
was a great learning experience, but there was always something more. Like I knew it in my heart. I was like, this can't be it. You know, I see it on TV. I watch it on YouTube. Like I was completely just enthralled with music. And I said, this can't be it. This can't be the only thing we're here for, right? And so, I mean, I'm just listening 24 seven. Like if you guys saw my Spotify playlist, uh, um, at the end of every year, they give you like a report of how many minutes of music you listen to. And it's, it's embarrassing sometimes. I'm like, oh my goodness. But we play it overnight. Like as we sleep, like we've got worship music going on, all this stuff. My wife hates it. Um, and she's not here, so I get to talk about her a little bit. But she's at home watching the, the five-week-old. I'm tired. <laughs> but she is uh, she's so sweet. And, and that's one of the cool things, too. I'll just rabbit trail just because it's my little girl and I can talk about her all I want. Uh, she loves music. <laughs> I told you this could happen so fast. <laughs> Woo! But, but she can be as fussy as she wants, and her dad can take the guitar in the living room and start playing, and she just, oh. and I don't play her anything like nursery rhymes. I don't, I don't get into all that. I just play her worship music, and I just sing over her, and she is at such rest and such peace when that happens. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. I'm going to stop, I promise. I promise. I'll stop talking about her because this will be all day long. Oh, but she's a sweetheart and completely wrecked my whole world in such a good way. But anyways, so we have to deny ourselves. And as, as I was saying, when I joined that worship team, I, uh, I found myself just so addicted. I hate to use that word, but to music. And the Lord dealt with me one day. He said, you got to stop listening to music. And I knew exactly what he was talking about because I was listening to everything at the time. It wasn't just worship music. It was country music and rock music and even a little rap and pop music. I, it just didn't matter. I love music. I mean, if you talk to anybody that's on this worship team or anybody that does anything with the art, you're creative. Like you love that expression, you know. It, it's just a beautiful thing to see how does somebody else perceive this, you know. And, and when they write music and songs, like, because there's a million worship songs about the same scripture in the Bible, right? And you, can, and you can hear them all and you think it's so funny to see how did somebody write this way and somebody write it this way and then you got somebody way over here writing it this way and how did you get there? It's because your own personal expression, your own personal relationship has defined the way that you express your adoration to a king, right? And so he says, you gotta get rid of music and I said, I don't want to. Like, I don't really want to. And he said, you got to. I want you to get in the word. And I said, Lord, can I at least just have my worship music? He said, no. <sighs> How am I going to do this, right? I, I got to listen to music. It, it literally keeps me going in the day. That's the problem. You got to get rid of music for a little while. And so there was about... I forget how long. It's been so long ago. It was, it was a couple weeks at least that I didn't listen to any music at all. I mean, even in the, in the car, I didn't turn the radio on. I didn't have it on at home. I, I, every, every moment that I spent with him was right here, right? And he, and he said, you have, to, you have to take that music off of that throne, and you have to let me sit back up there, right? Because even to do something like worshiping the Lord can just be a show. It can just be another thing taking his place, right? We can come here and we can, we can pour ourselves out because we get the stage and the microphone and the lights are on us and we think, yeah, look at me. But it's about him, right? That's why we're here. And, and we, we honored our team this morning. And you guys, I had the best team. And I will stand by that forever and ever. I, I was telling somebody the other day, I said the beautiful thing, the most beautiful thing is no matter who is on my team, each and every week. I never one time have worried, is somebody doing this for all the wrong reasons? Is somebody doing this just to be seen on the stage? And, and you guys, I don't think you understand how big of a deal that really is. You know, to have a people, uh, have a group of people that are completely invested in the sole reason that they would even be here, right? 
Oh, it's so good. So we have to deny ourselves. It has to be not about me anymore. And that's tough. That's really, really tough. We have to take up our cross. And uh, uh, what was it in the message? It said, um, embrace the suffering, I believe is what it said in that Matthew verse. And, and I've got wrote down here the story of Abraham. Um, guys, a lot of you guys know the story. Um, Abraham, Jesus, t- or the Lord tells him that he's going to be the father of many nations. He gives him this huge promise, and it looks really, really good. And he's like, yes, yes. And sometimes we hear the Lord and we think, yes, yes. And he says, okay, here's your son Isaac. He did it all the wrong ways, and then he finally did it the right way. And he says, here's your son Isaac. This is who I'm going to bless you through. I'm going to bring all of these descendants through Isaac, right? This is the promise. And he says, okay. And then, and then God tells him, tells him, he says, hey, you got to sacrifice your son. That very thing that I promised you, that very child that I gave you, I need you to give him back. Oh, it hurts my dad heart, you know? And Abraham said, you gave him to me. He's yours. I'll do it. And so in Genesis 22, I think I gave you that. I'm not going to flip there. We don't have a ton of time. Genesis 22. Uh, um, sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, he said, uh, and Abraham said, yes, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told his servants. The boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. We're going to worship there. He didn't say we're going to go sing songs. He didn't say we're going to go read the scripture. He said, I'm going to go to the place that God told me to. He said, I'm going to be obedient to the Lord, and I'm going to go to this place, and I'm going to do what he said. He said, I'm going to worship there. So what is worship? I'm going to go where God told me to go, and I'm going to do what God told me to do. I'm going to worship the Lord, right? And so then I've got in Hebrews um, chapter 11, verses 17, uh, previously in Hebrews 11, it's talking about all the fathers of the faith. Right? It's talking about consider all of these people that did all of these things, right? And it gets to this one. It says, it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Whew. What a faith. What, a, what an ability to worship the Lord. But you see, God said, hey, I can't afford for you to put Isaac up there, okay? I need to know that that's my spot. And I know that this promise is massive. This, this promise is huge. I need to know that you can handle it. So I need to know that if at any given time I need my spot, you'll give it to me, Okay. And so Abraham goes and he does his thing. And of course, you guys know the story. He, the angel tells him to stop. Um, and, and he finds the ram and he's able to make a sacrifice. And because of that, all of God's promises came to pass. His faithfulness was showed up again. And so, guys, this, this worship, this is, it's so much more. It's somebody asked me the other day, so what are you teaching about? And I said, oh, worship, because I'm a worship pastor, right? And I said, yeah, but nothing about music. And we're like, okay, well, okay, okay, whatever. But, but you guys realize, like, music is not worship. I wrote this, music should be the expression of an existing relationship with him. The worship of music is creating an offering for him. So this morning when we sing this song of your love never fails, it never gives up, right? So you sit here and you sing this song, your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. It can just be that, okay? You can just sing that. But what happens when you take that song and you think, your love never fails, and I go back and I remember that time that your love never failed. That time that I thought, 
oh, it feels bad. It doesn't feel like you're here, Lord. And then in a moment, I feel his love just completely enrapture me. His love never fails. And then we move on. We sing about the reign of darkness is ended. He reigns above it all, right? And so I can think back to a time when, Lord, you have to reign above this all. This is hard. It's a, it's a place that I can't get through myself. I can't, I can't figure out how to get this done, but Lord, I know that you reign above it all. And sometimes it comes from a place of your past and your story that because I have been in this place, I'm able to sing about this, right? But sometimes it comes from a place of I've never been here, but I know you said it, and I'm going to bridge the gap with my worship here, okay? I'm going to sing these songs until I find myself there, amen? That's music, okay? Music isn't the idea. Music is the expression of how we already should be in our heart. That, that constant falling on our knees and saying, all hail the king of all kings, right? This morning I'm sitting down there, we're worshiping, and he, you know, it, it's funny because we've talked about it before. Like, oh, you get so tired up there. You're like, come on, people, hurry up and get it so I can quit playing, you know? Hurry up. But but it was so good. I'm sitting there thinking, like, I have this message to teach about worship. And I thought, oh, he's cutting me short. I'm not going to have enough time to say everything that I want to say. And immediately, like, it's just so funny. Like, we can be just, we can be transparent, right? We're people. I mean, you kind of get, you know, in your head that I have something to share, you know. But what better is it that, would it be better that I give you a message of my own words? Or would it, is it better that you experience the Lord? Amen. I'll sit down all day long. If we're experiencing the Lord, you just keep on keeping on, okay? Like, you don't let me stop you. I ain't trying to quench the spirit in here, okay? And oh, so I sat there and just watching. Like, it's so good sometimes just to see other people just pouring themselves out. And my desire is that it wouldn't stop here. My desire is that your worship would take you out there. And tomorrow morning, when you wake up, you say, oh, hail King Jesus. And when you get that bad report from the doctor, you say, oh, hail King Jesus. There was a few weeks ago that uh, I was dealing with some stuff, some like physical just pains and fear. I mean, it was just a bunch of junk. I, I couldn't sleep. I, I didn't sleep for weeks except maybe one hour a night, you know, when I could finally just wear myself out enough to sleep. And it was all about, I'm going to die. Like, right around the time that my baby was coming and all these things were happening, I thought, like, I'm going to die. Like, if I go to sleep, I'm never going to wake up. Like, all these, and it was just, uh, I mean, just never-ending plague just of fear. And it was heavy. And we're talking, and, and, and Dad tells me, he says, oh, I did the same thing years ago. And I'm like, where was I? And he, apparently, I was at the meeting. We had a family meeting at the house, and we, we discussed all this stuff because, you know, we do this stuff as a family most of the time. And I said, I don't remember it. And so he was telling me some of the stuff that he dealt with that he went through. And, man, I'm telling you what, I just started after it. And it was every day, like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, Holy Spirit, you're here. You've not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. And I had, I had a whole list, okay? I sat at home one day at the kitchen table, and I said, no, I'm just going to search it out. And sometimes you just got to seek it out, amen? And so I looked for everything that I could find, the promises of God. I, and I started writing them down, right? And I kept, I, I keep legal pads. These are my favorite things, and it's because of my mother. I won't say any names, but... Uh, <laughs> But my wife, she can't stand it. She's so organized and everything has a place. And these legal pads are so random. If you've ever used one, you know, you just roll the paper and onto the next one. Oh, she hates it. But I love them. And so I have a little, I have the big ones and I have the small ones. And I had a small one just chock full. It's like three or four pages deep just in my bedside table. And there was one night that I woke up and was just, again, in that place of like, I can't sleep. I'm going to die. Like, and I reach over there and I get this thing. And, the, and let me tell you this too, if you're in that place and this is something that you're gonna do because I think it's something that you should do if you're in that place, write these things down. This book is chocked full of promises of things that he said, if you will come to me, all you weary, I'll give you rest. And so I reach over to my table and I pull this thing out and I start 
Number one, Psalms 23, maybe. Here we go. And I start reading them out loud. I mean, it's 2 o'clock in the morning or whatever. My wife's laying over there, just passed out of sleep. And I'm reading these things out loud. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Like all, and I'm on and on. And I'm just reading, 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 reading. I get all the way to the bottom of the list. And I said, thank you, Lord. And I put it back down. And I went to sleep. Just like that. Like you're, sometimes you just need to train yourself. But all the while... It wasn't music. It wasn't, it wasn't anything. It was, the, it was the spirit of the Lord. And, it, and you can find him wherever you will look for him. Okay? You're not going to find him when you've got your eyes closed. Okay? When you're, when you're hiding away from him in the week because, oh, Lord, i got too many things to go right now. I can't afford to stop and pray. You know? It sounds so terrible, but it's so true how we, how we interact with the Lord in a weekly basis. Right? We're coming up on the season of Easter, and I, it's so funny. Within the church culture, you always have what they call the CEOs, Christmas and Easter onlys. And, and that's why everybody preps for Easter, because it's the biggest service of the year. Everybody's got to come and get their fill, you know. I'm so excited that you guys don't have to do that, right? Like, the doors are open. I want to be here. I've been in places where I've burned out. Because what? Because we're seeking our own self. We're seeking this platform instead of the Lord, right? I'm reminded of the Israelites in the desert. The reason they wandered wasn't because God didn't want to give them the promised land. He just knew that if I give them the promised land now, then he says, I'm done. They're going to take this and run, and, and they'll never even acknowledge me after this. The Lord wanted them to know him first. He wanted them to encounter him first. And that's what we have to do. And so I'll try and wrap this up pretty quick. Um, there is, I want to read one more thing in Joshua 24. And this is, it's funny, you know, dad talks all the time about the Old Testament, New Testament being a type and shadow. Here we are in Joshua 24. Joshua, oh, I'm sorry, preface this with, um, they're about to go into the promised land. And Joshua called them together, all the tribes of Israel. Uh, let's skip down a little bit. He addresses the people. Yeah, let's keep going. This is all just him building up to what he's going to say. This is, this is what God, the God of Israel, says a long time ago. Your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived to the east of the river Euphrates. They worshipped other gods. I took your ancestor Abraham from the far side of the river. I led him all over the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants. I gave him Isaac, then I gave... Uh, then I gave Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. I let Esau have the mountains of Seir as home, but Jacob and his sons ended up in Egypt. I sent Moses and Aaron. I hit Egypt hard with plagues and then led you out of there. I brought your ancestors out of Egypt. You, come, you came to the sea, the Egyptians in hot pursuit with chariots and cavalry to the very edge of the Red Sea. Then they cried out for help to God. He put a cloud between you and the Egyptians and then let the sea loose on them. It drowned them. You watched the whole thing with your own eyes, what I did to Egypt. And then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the country of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan, and they fought you. But I fought for you, and you took their land. I destroyed them for you. Then Balak, son of Zippor, made his appearance. He was the king of Moab. He got ready to fight Israel by sending for Balaam, son of Beor, to come and curse you. Finally, I brought you into the land of the Amorites on the east side of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I destroyed them before you. I gave you victory over them, and you took possession of their land. But I wouldn't listen to, to Balaam. He ended up blessing you over and over. I saved you from him. You then crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. Oh, goodness. So he's painting this picture of the Lord's faithfulness. He says, okay, we've seen this. We've seen this. We've seen this. And I just feel like Joshua's got them sitting in a circle. He's like, okay, kids, let's remember all the things that we saw, okay? Let's remember. You guys remember the Red Sea? That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You guys remember when we were really hungry and he made food literally fall out of the sky so we could eat and live? That was cool, huh? Yeah. So then it goes on, I think, to verse 15. Yes, before that, actually. Oh, wait, no. I don't know where we're at. I can't see. I'll just, I'll just fly off the cuff. How about that? 
shoot from the hip. Basically, Joshua tells him all these things. He says, here's what you're going to do. He says, you're going to have to choose right now who you're going to serve. That before we came to this place, there was a lot of other gods. There wouldn't be a, a commandment to serve no other god except for him if there weren't a lot of other gods to choose from, right? He said, you're going to have to choose this day. And it wasn't just a one and done thing. You're going to have to choose every single day which God you're going to serve. Amen? And he says, but for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Right? And I wrote in my notes that you have an uh, an obligation. And this is just a side note. This really isn't part of the sermon. but, But men especially. We're kind of in talks with some different people about some things to do for the men. And we just had our first Soul Refiner video uh, teaching last Tuesday. And that was amazing. It was super powerful and it's going to be powerful. And I was talking with, maybe it was you, Adam, about even if you're not in a place where this is something that you need right now, it's such a good tool to have, right? It's such a good thing that I can come alongside somebody and say, hey, what's going on? And he says, man, it ain't good. And I say, hey, I've been to that soul refiner class. I can, I got the tools. I can help you. Right. And says, you have an obligation as a man to choose this day for your house. In the Christianity world, you know, there's plenty of scripture that calls men the head of their household. You know, back in the day, they got to make all the decisions for their household. And so when the men said, we will serve the Lord, they did too you know, because that's just how it went. And so, uh, man, I'm going to do this without crying, and then we're going to be done. My little girl at home I told you about, uh, I told my wife, we were talking, and, and she cannot decide for herself right now. She can't do it. She's five, almost six weeks old. She can't even, I mean, she barely, even that she knows my voice, I will tell you that. That's a really cool thing to experience, you know, when I'm talking and she's looking around. She's trying to find me, you know. Oh, man, it's fun. But she can't choose, so I get to choose for her. And as far as I'm concerned, when she's going through it, when she's not feeling good in her body, when she's not, I get to declare over her the goodness of of the Lord. And in five short weeks, we've already had to do it. And in five short weeks, we've already seen the faithfulness of the Lord. And in five short weeks, we started a rock stack that we're going to go back to. And we're going to say, look... You don't remember it, but it happened. So choose this day. And Joshua gives them three commandments. He says, fear God, worship him in total commitment, and get rid of all your other gods. It sounds similar to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me, right? It's very similar because that is the only way to worship the Lord. That is the only way to worship the Lord. If I, if I don't do these things and I come and I sing songs, I can even pray, I can, I can go help at the John 9, 7 project on Saturdays, I can do everything good, but if I haven't denied myself, if I haven't taken up my cross and if I haven't started to pursue him, what does it mean to follow somebody? You were talking about music earlier, and I couldn't help but think about Swifties. What does it mean to follow somebody? You want to learn a little bit about following somebody? Take note, the Swifties are teaching you, okay? I hate to even speak about them in here, but they're teaching you. Those people worship Taylor Swift better than most Christians worship the Lord. What are we doing? And she's just a person. She can't heal nobody. She can't set nobody free. She just puts on a little show and then takes your money and goes home. I mean, what kind of a deal is that? At least here at church, you got a chance to bring your pain and to bring your oppression and be free. What good is it to have everything that you want but lose your soul? No good, no good. And so, this morning, Myra, you can come on whenever you're ready. Uh, I wrote a couple of things. As far as men, I love this quote, and it's been in my brain, and I figure if it's there, it must be for some reason. Um, and I didn't write who wrote it. I should have. But he said, don't be surprised when you send your kids to Caesar, and they come back acting like Romans. We have this obligation to worship the Lord. 
And one of the most beautiful things, we've talked to several people about kids being involved in this thing, is that kids are involved on Sunday mornings in that worship period, that worship time where we get to sing songs and we lift our hands and it's so cute, the kids are dancing and they're lifting their hands. But if we go home and we just forsake the word, if we just forsake everything else about the Lord at home, are we really taking them with us into this place of worship? Are we really taking them to the throne and saying, look, this is Jesus. This is why we're even here. It's not because this is a fun song to sing. So don't be surprised if you, if you forsake the role of parenting to teach your kids about the Lord. Don't be surprised when they don't love the Lord. And that's hard. That's really hard. I told my wife when we were at the hospital, I'm holding my little girl. I said, all I want is for this girl to love Jesus. If I do nothing else right, but that one thing, it'll be enough. But it involves me taking her to that place that I go to meet the Lord. I have to take her with me. Say, look, it's him. We have to stop checking a box and start actually turning aside to him. Just like Moses did in the wilderness, the Lord didn't speak to him until he left his way, turned and went towards the Lord. And as soon as he did, the Lord spoke to him. He said, Moses, take your sandals off. I got something to tell you. We can't just come on a Sunday and check a box and say, I worship the Lord. I love Jesus. When your actions don't prove it. You guys, I'm so passionate about this. It's not an easy message to give people. It can feel very condemning, but I just want you to know that there's so much. There's so much in this thing. I hate for somebody to just be like, Sunday's enough. It's not. And there's so much to gain Monday through Saturday. There's so much to gain. The Spirit goes with you to work. The Spirit goes with you to the grocery store. You know, I've got a little baby and there's sometimes that she cries and I have no idea why the Spirit is there and I can say, Holy Spirit, what do I do? Last night we were on our way home from my wife's parents, my in-law's house. And she's crying, she's fussy. We just knew as soon as we put her in the car seat, she was going to go to sleep and we were going to be home free. And that did not work. They lived two hours away and it was a long, long trip home. And we were about an hour and a half from the house and she was still going. And I said, Lord, what do I do? This is a lot. I, I'm going to drive off the road. <laughs> like, I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed. And we kept having to stop. And, and he said, sing to her. And it's something that I do all the time. And in that moment, it was hard. Like, it was hard to be obedient to the Lord. And some, it, I do this every day. Like, I can't wait to get home from work to go get my guitar and come sit in the living room and just play because she loves it. And if she loves it, then I love it, you know. And so I started singing. It's like, okay, what, what song do I sing? And so I just kept singing just different things. And, and you could hear she was getting softer and softer and softer and softer. We made the next hour and a half trip in one leg. We never had to stop again. She was quiet. She was resting. We went home last night. Uh, we just knew we were like, oh, this is going to be a long night. This is, she had a crazy day. It's going to be a long night. She slept all night long, woke up one time. We fed her. We changed her diaper, put her back to sleep, and she went to sleep. And if you guys know about newborns or young, young, that's amazing. We were rejoicing this morning. Woo! She was sleeping. And we love that. But, but again, that obligation of I have a role to play in her life now that is only going to set her up to be in that role for herself later. Right? And the Holy Spirit was with me the whole way. It was Saturday night. That's a lot of times Saturday night people don't want nothing to do with the Lord, right? That's a tough night for the Lord. But he was there, and he was always there. And all I have to do is say, Lord. And he's like, what's up? What you got? Hey, how about you try this? That's silly. We'll try it anyways and see if I'm not good enough to fulfill my word, right? <sighs> One last thing. I said our kingdom has, off, has gotten off kilter. Our society today has this hierarchy of me on the throne with God serving me. We have a tendency to get ourselves in messes, following our own desires, then rub the magic genie lamp and say, God, you're supposed to help me. It has got to change. 
He's not the genie in the bottle that we've made him to be. There has to be a shift. We have to get off the throne of our own lives. We have to forsake ourselves. And, and I had another scripture, and I, I know I'm going late. I get it. I come by it honest. Yeah, yeah. You took my time. No. Uh, Matthew 10, and, I, and I'll leave you with this. Matthew 10, uh, verse 32. It says, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you'll find it. This is worship that I give up my own life. That everything that I want, that everything that I desire has to sit below him. I can still want these things. In Hebrews 12, I've got the verse, we don't have to go there. It says that since I'm surrounded by such this great cloud of witnesses, we just followed Hebrews 11 where it talked about all the fathers of faith. And he says, since I'm surrounded by all of these people, let me put off everything that hinders. It doesn't say all the sin, the, all the bad things. It says everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Whatever the, whatever the cost, Lord, if it's entangling me, that music that he says, quit, it was entangling me and I didn't even know it because I thought, well, it's about Jesus, it must be good. But it took his place and so it wasn't. And he said, everything that hinders, give it away. Pursue the cross because just like Jesus did, he saw the joy before him. You have to see the joy before you. You have to forsake yourself and you have to say, look, that's where I'm going. Okay, I don't know how to get there. I don't know how to get there, but I'm gonna take a step. And Lord, you said, fill in the blank. And I said, yes. And that is worship this morning. And that is, if, if you hear nothing else, just know this, worship is sacrifice. When the Lord says to do something, you do it. Obedience to the Lord is your worship to him. So it can look like music, it can look like dancing, it can look like twirling flags, it can look like whatever. It can look like telling somebody to have a good day or buying somebody's meal at the store. It doesn't matter what you do as long as it's in obedience to him. Amen. Amen. So I want to pray for you guys. Uh, are you going to dismiss at the end? I want to pray and then he's going to come dismiss you guys. So Lord, we just thank you for grace this morning. That where would we be without your grace? And so this morning we acknowledged you as the king of all kings. We sang songs about the kingdom of the Lord and your majesty this morning. And Lord, let it not be words. Let it sink into the very depths of our soul. Let it come out of an overflow of our hearts that you are king every single day, Lord. That every day we wake up and we choose this day whom we would serve. And let it be you, O oh Lord. Let it be you. So this morning, if, if there's anybody that would, would say, Lord, that's, I've been doing it wrong. I've been checking boxes. Lord, we just extend grace and forgiveness, Lord. And if that's them, we just declare that they would be able to pick up their mat and walk today. That they would be able to pursue you from now. They don't have to go back and start over, but Lord, from right now today, they would look at you and they would acknowledge your kingship and they would follow you, laying aside everything that hinders, Lord. That they would pursue the king, the only king that is worthy of that. We honor you this morning, Jesus. We could do nothing without you. 
And it's your name, the only name above all names, Lord, that we pray. Amen. One thing I want to tell you to let you go. He said something that was kind of unique to me. He wrote stuff down on a legal pad. The Word of God is legal. When you go to court, you go prepared. So when you write things down on a legal pad, you're saying that here's what I'm petitioning. As an officer of the court, if you will, I'm standing before you, judge, and I'm putting you in remembrance of your word. That's legal. And that's why it works. Amen? Stand with me. Turn to your neighbor and say, I like you. Thank you. Now you just have to go and do it, right? It's easy to say. Sometimes it's hard to do, right? I noticed some of y'all looked to one side or the other. I'm not going to point any direction. But y'all looked to the other side and said, I like you. Hallelujah. Listen, be blessed. Have an amazing week. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Start telling your testimony to people. It doesn't have to be all 37 hours of it, okay? Condense it down to two or three minutes. Give them that elevator presentation, right? You're not pointing out all their faults. You're talking about how good God is. Amen? It's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Amen? Be blessed. Know you're highly favored. And you walk in His presence. Amen?